What up, y'all? It's DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And this is another edition of Pillow Talk with the Casey crew. Welcome. Yes, welcome. And uh, we should be on time for here on out. Uh, we're not promising Why anything. Why are we starting a podcast with a promise? I'm, gonna, I'm just telling apology, you. Apology. The nanny's back. An explanation. The nanny is back. So <laughs> it looks like we will be back on, you know, everything should be back on time. We shouldn't have any more problems. We should be okay. Mm-hmm. The nanny is back and things are getting back into the swing of things. The disclaimer word should. Should. Now, uh, let's start off Pillow Talk. If you don't know what Pillow Talk is, if you just join us, we talk about everything that's been going on in the last week. Topics, uh, whether it's news, celebrity news and all that stuff. So now let's talk Sophia Richie and Scott Disick. All right, let's get it started. Now, allegedly they broke up. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're saying that allegedly he went to Kanye's listening session over the, uh, which was when Thursday. And when he was there, he was seen, uh, with another girl hands, you know, all over the the other girl. And Sophia Richie allegedly found out about this and broke up with him. Now, if you don't know, Sophia Richie is 19 years old Mm -hmm. and Scott Disick is 35 years old. Now, Sophia Richie, of course, is the daughter of Lionel Richie, but, you know what? Forget about the cheating. I mean, he, he he's he's known to to do his thing. But I wanted to ask you if your daughter mm-hmm. was 19 years old and was dating a 35 year old man, what would you think? Would you allow it to happen? Can you say anything? Because the dad was uh, Lionel Rich was pretty upset about it, but he said there's nothing that he can do. You know, if your 19 year old daughter is dating a 35 year old grown ass man, mm-hmm. what do you do? What do you say? I would cut it off immediately. Well, how can you cut it off? You're talking about allowed and, you know, the word allowed and whether, you know, you have a say in your child's life at the age of 18, 19. I feel as though you always have a say in your child's life and it depends on the relationship and it depends on how they respect your opinion, how they respect your advice and that's determined by what you've built with them up to that point Uh now of course you know it gets to a point where it's about the heart and you know the heart does what the heart wants and you know we, we we've all heard things like that and most of the time people tend to follow their heart so i know that it can get complicated but from the onset I would have to sit my daughter down and say, how old did you say Scott Disick is? 35 years old. He's 35. It's very difficult for me to understand what a 35 year old would want with a 19 year old. Well, I guess maybe I can understand what he would want. (laughs) Yes. With a 19 year old. But what you would want seriously with a 19 year old that's Mm -hmm. really hard for me to imagine and I think I'm in a better position to say that now than maybe I would have been a few years ago right now Madison is 16 years old 16 years old right and while she's intelligent responsible and mature Mm -hmm. she's still a kid Right. She still wants vans. Right. You know, she like I still have to take her shopping. Right. And weigh in on most of her decisions, at least the ones that will have a long term effect in her life. And I know three years is a long time. And, you know, a person can mature a lot in three years. But between 16 and 19, I think that I have a good vantage point on this situation. And. Even judging from who I was at 19, and believe me, I thought that I was all the way grown right. at 19. At 19, I thought that I knew everything. I thought I was beyond competent. I thought that I was 100% equipped to take on the world. And I don't want to say nobody could tell me anything because I respected the opinions of my parents, mm-hmm. but I thought that my opinion trumped anyone else's opinion, especially when it came to my life. So I understand that you can be very mature and and that you're you you could have the, your wherewithal right. when it comes to dealing with things, but at 19 you're not really equipped to deal with a 35-year-old. A 35-year-old is it's like Madison dating someone our age. Correct. 
Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's ridiculous. I agree. It's ridiculous. A 35-year-old has been through so much right. and has done so much, experienced so much trials and errors, accomplishments, failures, relationship after relationship. He has three children. I right? don't know, two or three. They I'm not sure. Th- they have, I believe. Oh, I'm not the biggest Kardashian. I'm not sure. You know, I, I thought it was two, but go ahead. Um, person, but no, I think, whichever way, however many kids they have, he has like he's been through everything. So right. to deal with a person that age is, I mean, I think it just really tips the, the scale. You know, and, and, and I thought about this. And as a dad, I would have to see him. You know, if, if, yeah, if, if, if that was my daughter, right, 19 years old and a 35 year old man was dating and maybe my daughter was so she believed she was in love. She was head over heels, whatever it was. I would have to nip it in the bud with him. Every time I see it, I would tell him I would fuck you up. You need a chin check. Yeah, no. Every, every time I see you, I'm gonna no, fuck no, you up. No, no, seriously. And if, and if I'm and and maybe maybe you you you're well equipped and, and I can't fight you. Maybe you're stronger than me. Stop it. I'm gonna jump you. <laughs> me and 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 my friends will jump you every time. And every time you see, I will get locked up because there is no way I would let you take advantage of my daughter. Because like you said. You are well old. You're what you're older. You've been through. You have more experiences. You have two, three kids. You know things. You know the game. You know what to say to make people feel comfortable. But I think that that's what it is. I got to be honest with you. I think that older men seek out younger women. Because, and I mean excessively younger women. I'm not right. just talking about, you know, five. A couple of years, yeah. This of... isn't even 10 years, you know, like this is. Damn near 20. Exactly. So they seek out extremely younger women because it puts them in a position where they can manipulate them. Absolutely. It's all they about can manipulation. They tell them anything. Think about your friends that are, you know, in their 20s, in their 30s. Some women I know in their 40s. Men can tell them anything. Absolutely. And they've been through a lot and they can still get manipulated because, you know, we all want to believe the best in someone else, especially someone else that we love or that we care about or that we're thinking about a future with. Imagine an inexperienced 19 year old. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely right. And that's my whole thing. It's like the manipulation thing is everything. It's like. And no disrespect to anybody young, if you listen to the podcast, I, we appreciate you. But at a certain age, it's certain things that you're you're kind of green with. Like you're green. If if an older man gives you a compliment, you might say, "Damn, he's older, and he could have any woman in the world, but he likes me." Mm-hmm. And it might be a turn on, mm-hmm. and he might be using that against you and and making you feel away and and you know, taking you on life experiences that maybe you haven't had before and taking you to different restaurants and different places around the world and doing those things. And that might make you feel. It could be good. around Brooklyn. It doesn't have to be You're right. <laughs> that elaborate. I mean, it, it's just men of a certain age have a way with younger girls. I'm going to call her a girl. Technically, yeah, okay. Maybe she could be considered a woman. And where's but the mom? In my eyes, she's a girl. They have a way because they use their experience to their advantage. Right. And you're right. They know what they're doing. They can look at them a certain way, smile at them a certain way, pay them a compliment, take them take them somewhere, do certain things that make them feel special. Right. And just like you said, that girl will look at him, especially Someone like Scott Disick, who is attached to the Kardashian family, who some people consider attractive, who dresses well, who's lived, who's been around the world, who's had a lot of experiences because of the lifestyle that he lives. And she might look at him like, wow, just like you said, he can be with a multitude of women and he chooses little old me. And not to say that, you know, she's not beautiful and she's from a celebrity family and whatnot. I'm sure that she can have her pick of the litter where men are concerned as well. I'm not saying that she's quote unquote lucky or unworthy or anything like that, but in her mind, because she's not experienced, she may look at that situation like that and feel as though, you know, this man can do no wrong and that she is lucky 
to be with him. And that's a trap. When a person feels lucky to be with another person, that's a trap. That's a bad place to be. People have to realize that I may be lucky, but he's lucky as well. Right. When you feel like the lucky one, then you're technically at a disadvantage and you do things to compensate for that lack of luck that you think that the other person that you're with is experiencing by being with you. Right. You compensate. Right. No, you're absolutely right. And, you know, I'm glad that it didn't work. I'm glad. Oh, that, you don't know if it didn't work. Well, I mean, it's, well, it it's, seems it's not like working it. right now. But. It seems like it. And, and I hope it doesn't because she needs to be with somebody that's closer to her age. And I'm not saying a 19 year old, 20, five years old is, is even is, is I'm OK with. But when it comes to what, close to 20, that's a little that's a little crazy to me. You know, that's 16 years, 17 years. That's that's a lot. Do you think there's any possibility that he's now I just, you know, I like to look at things from all perspectives. OK, that's my opinion. Do you think that there's any possibility that there can be a connection, that there's a spark between the two of them, that the stars aligned and they were meant to be, for instance? Do you know what I mean? Because sometimes, you know, I'm saying this for the people that may argue well, you know, everything isn't so cut and dry and so right. black and white. And there's something to be said for chemistry. And, you know, we don't always have to go by the rules. And they might be able to give you five examples of people that are 20 years apart that Correct. worked out down the line. What do you think about and I think the that, naysayers? And I think that can happen when the age is right. You know, S- Sophia Richie is not even old enough to drink. She's not even old enough to get into some of the clubs and some of the spots where he frequents. So I don't think she's grown enough to really understand herself yet Mm -hmm. you know now if she was 30 and he was 50 i'm cool with that that's That's 20 years apart she's grown she's older she experienced life she's at an age where she can i think that she can see for herself but at age 19 think about when i was 19 i was still trying to figure out what the fuck i wanted to be in, in in life i was you know still Pulling, you know, stupid ass scams and hanging with my friends and drinking all types of stupid shit. Like I was doing stupid shit. That's what I want to be. I, just, I was just doing stupid shit mm-hmm. at 19. I wasn't thinking about grown people shit. I wasn't thinking about mortgages and houses and <laughs> raising kids. I wasn't thinking about that. Uh-huh. I was having fun. I was going to Philly Greek Fest. I was going to Jones Beach. I was going to uh, <laughs> whatever it was. Fourth of July in Virginia. I was going to Miami. Daytona Beach. Like yeah, that's yeah. the type of thing that I was thinking about. Mm-hmm. And that's cool because you're 19. But think about it. At 19 she was I, I seen pictures and videos of her taking Scott's kids out and doing all that it's stuff. Ridiculous. Like, it's just ridiculous. You that's know? ridiculous. So. But I just want to Um, extend what you just said it's not necessarily about the amount of years Uh that are in between two people in age Mm -hmm. it's the stage of your life that you're in where those years exist right so just like you said if it's a 35 year old dating well you said 30 and a 50 but if it's like a 35 year old dating a 55 year old mm-hmm. these are two people that have lived and experienced life in a certain way right you can take for granted that they've been through a lot of things and are at a point where they can really make a good solid decision about who they want to be with regardless of age Mm -hmm. in the upward direction from from the 35 year old. But when you take a child or someone that just became a woman who hasn't experienced anything and you pair them with someone that's 15, 20 years older than, than them, then they're not a match. Right. Because that younger half hasn't experienced nearly the amount of things that the older one has experienced, which makes them, in my opinion, inadequate for one another. Right. And I I agree with that. And and I think that at that age, they're not ready. In the older age, like I said before, a little more experience, a little more time, maybe will help the connection a lot better. But I'm glad that they are. Hopefully, I'm glad that they are not fucking with each other right now. (laughs) And I'm just thinking from a dad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, next, I want to talk about um, quickly Drake and Pusha T. Okay. All right. Now, of course, if you don't know what's going on, uh, Pusha T released an album uh, a week ago. And on the album, he had a song called Infrared and he took a shot at Drake. All right. Now, Drake replied. 
with a diss record, which was dope. But at one of the last lines of the diss record, he mentioned Pusha T's fiance. Mm-hmm. Something like Make It Rain on Virginia Williams, I think her name is. Um, Pusha T then replied, totally disrespectful. Went totally in, talked about uh, Drake not being a deadbeat dad. Uh, talked about Drake having a kid. Talked about uh, Drake's uh, producer, OVO, being sick. Uh, he went in, totally in. Mm-hmm. Some people saying Pusha T went too far. Recently, uh, Jay Prince, who is one of the people that Drake is signed under, is like a big OG out in Houston. Pretty much runs Houston, mm-hmm. right? OG, OG. He says someone that Drake is signed under. He's like signed under his. Jay Prince's son was the one that founded Drake. Okay. So they kind of he signed through that production company and they get PC. Somehow, somewhere. I don't know how the numbers run, but I know he's connected. Mm -hmm. Uh, They don't want Drake to respond. And people saying Pusha T went too far. What do you think? Why don't they want Drake to respond? Um, I think I think they look at it as Pusha T is not on Drake's level and Mm -hmm. it can only hurt Drake more than help him. Mm -hmm. So let's break it down a little bit. Do you think Pusha T went too far? First and foremost, you heard all the records. Do I think that? No, I don't. I don't think that Pusha T, well, mm, in general, I don't think that Pusha T went too far. Maybe a couple of lines can be, um, can be argued, but I feel, okay, like there's a saying, right? Mm -hmm. Um, How does it go? If, forget about the saying, Mm -hmm. because I don't want to misquote it. The way I think about it is, let's say two people are in a fight. Uh Uh-huh. And one person stabs the other and the other person takes out a gun and shoots the person that stabbed him. Okay. Some people would say that the one that pulled out the gun went too far. Right. I don't feel that way. Okay. I feel as though when you open up that door of hurt, then you get what you get. Okay. You stab me. What's to say that, like, why do I have to be bound by some unspoken rule that I can only go as so far to stab you back? Mm. Why? Because you dictate how I'm supposed to react to your initial action? No, it doesn't work that way. If you act upon me, I'm going to react upon you in the way that I see fit or however my reflex dictates. I'm going to react in my way and nobody can tell me What's enough, what's not enough, and what's too much. Mm -hmm. If you don't want that reaction, then you don't act upon me. That's how I look at it. So the notion of too far Uh in that type of situation is a little bit lost on me. Mm -hmm. Um, In, you know, we were away, we were in Trinidad and Tobago. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, as you guys know, we were bogged with all types of things so i was a little bit late on hearing the diss track so we were having dinner Mm -hmm. and rashawn played it for me Uh and what i like about the song is that it was very clear the first time i heard it i was able to hear every word to understand every thought every line every everything and with drake mentioning you said her name is Virginia Williams, right? Yeah, uh-huh. His fiance, his fiance, I just feel as though Drake gets what he gets. Right. You know, if you don't want somebody to talk about the fact that you have a child that you allegedly didn't claim up until now, the idea that the the mother of your child is allegedly a porn star, um, which I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently that's the rumor. If you don't want them to attack every little bit of your personal life, Mm -hmm. then you don't go for their fiance, their wife, their mother, their child. There are just certain things that you don't touch. Right. When it comes to rap music, I think that there are certain things that are fair game. And I think that there are others that are not. And when it comes to the people that are near and dear to somebody, those are the things that are not. So when you do that, you kind of tell you're communicating to that other person that it's okay to go for your jugular. And that's what Pusha T did. Um, I just didn't really see the point in him going for um, Drake's producer. What is, His name is OVO. OVO. 
isn't isn't it's not OVO eight or something? OVO forty. <laughs> OVO forty. OVO forty. Yeah. Um. Who has what disease? Uh, MS. Who has multiple multiple sclerosis? Um. I didn't really see the point of that necessarily. He was just firing at everybody. Personally, yeah, I know. Um. So he has multiple sclerosis, and there were a few lines. Um, dedicated to him. Right. Um, I just thought that he was kind of like collateral damage. Right. So I didn't really like that personally. I thought that the lines were really creative. The six, 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 six. All that stuff. I thought it was creative. I mean, I enjoyed it musically, but I didn't really love that he did that. But um, I just feel like you get what you get. That's my yeah, opinion. I, and I agree with you. I, you know, I, you know, I agree with you. You know, if, if you, Mention if you step out of the the realm and you step out of me and you and you bring my fiance or, or my wife or whatever it is, my kids or whatever it is outside of that, it is what it is. I'm going at you heavy as a motherfucker and I don't give a fuck. Yeah. You know, there's certain things that are off limit. And then once you jump in that realm, you can't be mad. Like you said, you cut me with a knife. I pull out a gun and shoot you. You can't be like, oh, you took it too far. No. No, I didn't. Right. If you didn't want that, man, you could have stayed in the street and we could have shot a fair one with our hands. But wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hip hop aficionado. Uh-huh. Um, what started it in the first place? Why did Drake go at Pusha T in the first place? Pusha T actually, this this all started from a long time of Pusha T Isn't and the obvious and, question and Little Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, Pusha T always felt, and I think his fans always felt that little Wayne was kind of taking his style and his persona and what he looked like and the way he did his music and his style. And it's always been like a back and forth between Pusha and Wayne. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you think about that? Do you think there's any um, truth to that? I don't know. You know, there's one thing, I mean, they have they, a lot of this stuff that's similar with, with a, a, a little bit of things when it comes to style and the way they perform and the way they rap. But, you know, I know Pusha for a long time. I know Pusha when I went to school in Hampton and that's always been him. Mm-hmm. Um, Wayne, um, I'm not sure. I, I, I really don't know. You know, it is people can have the same type of style, but that's where it started from. And then um, I think Pusha dropped a song called Mr. Me Too. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like a shot at Little Wayne kind of mimicking him and trying to be like him. And it, the beef's been going on for a long time. And they always just had words back and forth. Fuck you, fuck you. They like little shots. So when Pusha did the album, he kind of threw a shot at Wayne. He threw a shot at Birdman Baby. And he threw a shot at Drake. He threw a shot at the whole crew. Okay, so Pusha started it. I believe with Drake, This yes. round, he started with it. With Drake, yes. So then Drake responded with the Virginia Williams comment. Exactly. And then Pusha bit his whole entire head off. Exactly. Okay, go ahead. And that's how it basically started. I mean, and that's that's how it started, you know, but Pusha th- threw a shot at Birdman, threw a shot at Wayne, and then threw a shot at Drake. Let me tell you, the shame in it for me is that <laughs> this all could have been avoided because Drake is, I mean, he's my personal favorite hip hop artist right Mm -hmm, now mm -hmm. um i enjoy his music more than anybody else's um right now so it's a shame because he's so musically talented and gifted that he could have gotten just as shocking or great of an effect in a different way what do you mean he didn't have drake drake he didn't have to go the virginia williams route he could have bitten Pusha T's head off in a much more creative and effective way. He's I, capable. But I, some like some people like it's like I tell you that let's say I'm a loser, right? Uh-huh. And um I tell you that I don't know, like I insult you and you just let's just say you're not that gifted and you know you're not good when it comes to comebacks and uh-huh. you're like your mother. Okay. You're gonna. You, 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 you're saying your mother because you got nothing else. Mm-hmm. You can't come up with something quick. You can't come up with something funny. There's a crowd. Everybody's waiting on you to say something. You want everybody to laugh. You want to say something satisfying. You don't want to be looked at as an equal loser as me. So you come back with your mother because you got nothing else. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what this seems like. 
You know, like the Virginia Williams comment, it's like, for what? Right. You could have come up with something a lot more clever. And like, look at the whole um, Drake Meek Mill beef and how, you know, that dis- that this song went over. Like, Drake annihilated him because the, the whole song was clever and it was great. It was catchy. And, it you know, and he didn't right. have to go the same route is my point. So to me, it's like, for what? But this is the thing. This, this all could have been avoided. It, it, it really couldn't have. And I'm going to tell you why. When this is, and this is the thing why people take, you know, maybe shots at Drake. Drake, people say he's one of the best, right? Right now, right? Mm-hmm. One of the best. And to be one of the best, he'll always have a asterisk under his name or over his name because of, does he write his own songs? You know, because... They said that Quentin wrote one of his verses. Mm -hmm. So because of that, he'll always have that asterisk and people will always test that because everybody wants to be the best. But you can't be the best rapper and best lyricist if somebody else writes your rap, you know, and that's rights. The word rights is like a current word. Well, I know I don't think Quentin writes for him now, but. Nobody knows the situation. We don't know if Quentin wrote one song, if he wrote a verse, if he just said, okay, I want to take parts of it. We don't know. All we know is we heard Quentin rap a song kind of like a reference track, kind of like how Biggie did for Little Kim at one time or how Mm -hmm. Jay-Z did for Foxy Brown at one time. Mm -hmm. So people will always tag that. And that's what Pusha T did. It was written, but it was written by, it was written, but it was by Quentin. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was the stab. People are always going to test that. And Drake is going to have to take that. It, it, it is what it is. You know, if you did, it is what it is. You know, you can't do nothing about that. Let me ask you a question. Okay. Is that the world's worst thing if this person, Quentin, wrote a verse? Yes or no? All right. Explain. Yes. If you are a lyricist and want to be the best rapper, it is big because... Being a rapper and being compared to some of the greats, Jay-Z, Biggie, Tupac, Kendrick, J. Cole. Let me ask you. I'm going to stop you right there. Okay. Do you think that of the, I don't, I wasn't counting, let's say five people you just named, you think that none of them ever had a verse? No. That was written by somebody else? I don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I disagree. I don't think so. I don't think Jay-Z ever got a verse from somebody. What's I don't think... done in the dark doesn't always come to light. Let me tell you, it would have came out by now. Not necessarily. If Jay-Z had a verse from somebody, I don't think, I don't think Jay verse, has ever had one. half a verse. No, nah, I don't think so. I, I don't listen, think so. I, don't think I so. find that A very... line, maybe one or two, like uh, you know, you be in the or studio. Three or four or five. I think you might. I think you could be in the studio. You somebody. No, nah, I don't. I don't think somebody's taking a full song, a full verse. Who I don't just said so. a full song? Why? Are you... uh, all right, a I verse. Think you just jump from maybe five lines, possible verse to a full song. I don't think those artists would. I never. Just, and I don't necessarily. And especially with somebody like Jay Z, who doesn't write things down and who ac- actually formulates the raps Wasn't in that his Biggie? head. That was Jay-Z and Biggie. They both rap like that. Two that never wrote anything down. Didn't hold on, have a hold pen. on. Jay- I-, I heard that about Biggie. I never heard Jay-Z that about Jay-Z. Jay-Z the same. Hold on. You're saying he never, never wrote anything any down. of his songs, any of his... Never wrote anything down. Never wrote anything down. down. No. No, I never heard that. I no. didn't know that. I know Biggie. No, he never wrote anything down. He, he, he would go to the studio and rap it off the top of his head. But what I'm saying is of the, let's say, five people you just named. Correct. You don't think no. any of them. No. I just find that difficult to believe i don't think so i find that difficult to believe i mean it's possible i don't don't think so i just find that difficult to believe i I definitely don't think so and um with those five and that's what in that's what people are are wanting to be they wanted to be the best lyricists now that's why i said it makes a big deal when you're talking about lyricists and being the best rapper but now when it comes to creating music i don't i think you just want to create the best type of music. I think when a singer goes in there and they get parts from this person and writes from this person, it doesn't matter. They just want to create the best song. And I think Drake is the best song creator out in the last 10, 20 years. Mm-hmm. But as a rapper and a lyricist, if you want that title, you have to follow different instructions, in my opinion. Yeah, you know, I, I'd have to think about it a little bit more. I don't know if I would say that Drake is one of the best lyricists ever. A boy spit. I'm, no, he's, I'm talking he's dead about nice. one of the best lyricists ever. Like when you talk about some of the people that you just named, in my opinion. He's definitely one of the best lyricists out there. I don't know if he writes his own stuff, but when it comes to rapping, when he raps, he spits. That boy can spit. 
like I said, he's I hands don't down know if I would, one of the nicest to me. I don't know if I would say that he's one of the best lyricists ever, but I enjoy his music okay. more than some of the people that you just named. Okay, let me ask you a question. Maxwell, one of your, I think, your favorite R&B artist ever. He's my favorite R&B artist ever. Would it make you feel any way, the songs that he wrote, right? Mm-hmm. Would it make you feel any way if you found out he really didn't write those yes, songs? Yes, but I found that out and it hurt me. See, exactly. So, <laughs> exactly. Yes, because it's... Um, you, you tied into him. Um, you feel ta- like yeah, he's singing yes. about some pain that he had. Or some love that he had or something as um, as fans, if you consider yourself a fan of music. Right. Um, we don't just buy into the music. We buy into the artist mm-hmm. as well. And if you find out that your artist is a little janky, it affects the way that you perceive the music and you per- you perceive the art and mm-hmm. the craft. So, yes, it can definitely change an opinion that you have of someone that you're a fan of. So, no, I, I understand that. That's not lost on me. I'm just saying I asked the question about the five artists that you named because you never, ever, ever, ever want to be unfair. Mm -hmm. You never want to hold someone to an unfair standard. Right. And the standard can be there because of lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. If you are unaware that maybe your favorite artist might have had a little versy poo written by somebody else or a few lines by anyone else, then that unfair standard will exist. And I just feel as though if it were just one verse or a few lines in the song that, you know, and you also have to consider context. Like they could be in the studio and, you know, they could be, you know, there could be energy, there could be vibes. Someone can kind of throw something out there. Oh, that's dope. Oh, what if I say it like this? It could be a conversation. It can be like a little bit of a, a borrow. It could be a little bit of a collaboration. I don't think like he, dude wrote a whole verse and like shoved it in Drake's face. And he's like, yeah, because I'm not qualified enough, talented enough or creative enough to do this myself. I'm just going to bum yours. Right. I don't think that that happened. I think maybe it just kind of worked if it happened. Do you know what I mean? So I just think that it's about context and people are just so quick to rush to judgment and slap a label and be like, okay, well you're not legit. Like I just, I think that's kind of unfair. You know, uh, and I'm not going to lie. Right. If I'm Drake and I'm probably one of the, I'm one of the nicest right now and I'm doing a million and one songs, I'm doing an album, I'm doing a touring and somebody comes up with a concept of a record, I would take some of it. Not to say I would take it for verbatim, but I would like, oh, shit, hey, I'll pay you for it. I'll take parts of it. I would do that. But I'm not a rapper. I'm not somebody that's been writing for a long time and this means everything to me. That's not what I've done. But for them, maybe it has been, you know, so I really don't know. But I mean, it's hard for me to say because these people that consider themselves lyricists, mm-hmm. your Nas, your Jays, your Biggie's, and I your understand Pox, that. you know, your Kendricks, your J. Coles, your Big Sean's, you know, those artists that really consider themselves lyricists and they write down bar for bar. They look at they don't look at Kanye the same as they look at themselves, you know. They don't look at, you know, uh, another artist out there, even like a Cardi B, the same way they look at themselves. And there's nothing wrong with a Cardi Wait, B. Wait, why'd, why'd you throw Kanye in there? Oh, Kanye doesn't write his own rhymes. He he gets help. That's oh. a known fact. Oh. Whether it's Consequence or it's uh, a bunch of people that, that, that help him. It's Travis Scott. You know, it's a bunch of them that, that help him. And there's nothing wrong with that because he creates great music. Mm-hmm. But, you know... I don't look at him on the same le- level as I look at Kendrick or I look at Hove. It's just just what I do. But I love his music and there's well, nothing wrong with it. Basically, I think you're saying that there's nothing wrong with it. Right. But you just you're in your own category, the way that you go about creating your own music. It just puts you in your own category and there doesn't necessarily have to be anything wrong with the category that you're in. Right. Same thing with Puff, like with Puff that makes beats like or, or even Kanye. You know, Kanye makes amazing beats. Do I think Kanye does it all on his own? No, I don't think that. I think he has help. I think he has a team of producers and he touches things up. Now, another producer, let's say like Premier, 
I don't think anybody touches Premier shit. He just knowing what him, does he produce? He's produced tons of shit for Gangstar, tons of shit for Biggie, tons of shit for Jay Z. All all pretty much like this. Any record out there you hear with a lot of scratching, it's usually him. Like unbelievable, it's unbelievable. The Biggie joint, uh-huh, he yeah, did yeah, that. Yeah. So ghetto, dun, 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 dun. Mm-hmm. he did all the all the hood classics. He pretty much did. Uh-huh. Um, same thing with Just Blaze. I, I don't think Just Blaze, he's the type of person that will do everything himself. That's him. But anyway, that's just how I feel about that. I just want to talk about, uh, I don't even know how we got on that, but we were talking about Pusha T going too far. And we both agree that he didn't go too far. Yeah, I don't think so. All right. Well, it's time to get up out of here. That's it? Yeah, that's it. There's no other topic? No, nah, it's 36 minutes. We got to go. See. I got to get, no, we said 30 minutes and we had 36 and we got to get to sleep. And it's time to go to sleep. We said we're going to start getting these up. Don't even look at me like that. No, I'm looking at the time right now. All right, let me, all right. We'll it's do 11.46. Another, we'll do another topic. If you can say hallelujah five times. See. Say hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> say that. You're going to put me on blast five, like that? Say that five times. Can't do it. <laughs> I am not capable. I am say just it. not capable. Say it. Say it. I'm going to say it one good time. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> that wasn't it. Hallelujah. 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 No, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, see? No, hallelujah. No, forget it. Forget it. I did it. Forget it. <laughs> forget it. All right. Well, we'll see you guys. Wait, Wednesday. you're just going to say that and not give any backstory? <laughs> well, well, we were in the car and I don't know how Madison knew mommy couldn't say hallelujah. And she was like, Ma, say hallelujah. And Gia could not say it for nothing. It took her about 30 <laughs> hallelujah. times. Hallelujah. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> And she still can't say it. I don't understand what is wrong with she me. Can't, she can't say it anyway. But we'll see you guys on Wednesday. We appreciate you guys for rocking with us. And we're back. The nanny's back. We'll give you all the updates and, and details with that. And um, that's On the Casey Crew Podcast. That's right. So um, we'll see you next week. I'm DJ Envy. And I am Gia Casey. And that was another edition of Pillow Talk with the Casey Crew. Toodles. Toodles.